Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to your YouTube channel. And today I have a very simple and practical video, it will be extremely short. Today I am dealing with some uh, critical fault clearing time um, that is a very important indicator regarding uh, transient angle stability. Um, what I'm trying to say is my students they are taking some assignment related to uh, critical fault clearing time and in order to make the life easy of my students they will be using what we call a DPL. A DPL is basically a script that is created using the Dixil and simulation language and that is basically a script that allow some automatic calculations inside Power Factory. To be honest, this, this DPL is extremely simple and what it's doing is basically apply a short circuit to the, to the project, to the power system, and then remove the, remove the, the fault and mm, then assess the time domain response, the time series representing the rotor angle, and from there, um, it's able to identify if the system is stable or not. And the idea is that this DPL is using a systematic approach to obtain the, the, the critical for current time, okay? That is, that, is, that is basically the idea of this video. Um, well, now what we need to do is basically go to the Xilin Power Factory and start to do things, okay? And that is what I will do now. Well, right now we are here inside the Xilin Power Factory and as you can see, I have here a folder inside my data manager, my, my data manager. And inside this folder, I have several examples that we have been working uh, for, for a while regarding time domain simulations, okay? What I will do is basically create a new project and I will use that project as the base to show you how to use those new DPL to calculate the uh, critical fault credit time, okay? That is what I will do. Well, um, I will be using the same model that we used the last time, and that is the test system, single machine infinity boost bar time domain. And what I will do basically is copy, and then I will paste here, okay? And as you can see, there is a new project, and it's a duplicate project. And the next step is that I will change the name, okay? I would like to use a name that is more representative and what I will do is first change this number and this will be the project number four and the name will be a test system single machine infinity boss and you can see over here that at the very end I include the, the letters CCT okay what I will do now is I say OK, and now we have here the project with the new name, OK? Now let me activate this project. And voila, we have here the project and is active, OK? This is the project that we have been using for a while, and now I will change here, and I will include here a phrase for a critical, critical clearing time, OK? Done. Now we have a proper name here. And what I will do, what I will do is, okay, now I want to um, create a study case that we can use specifically when we are calculating the critical fault clearing time, okay? To do so, what I will do is the following. I will go to the data manager, okay? And inside the data manager, inside the data manager, what I will do is I will copy this study case, okay? There is a study case here that is the basic study case. And I will copy and then paste inside the same folder, okay? 
And as you can see over here, there is a new study case. You can see that that is the new study case that is located here. And what I will do straight away is change the name, okay? And this will be the critical, critical, critical clearing time, okay? Critical clearing time. L l let's use just critical uh, CCT, CCT, okay? Now, what I will do is just basically uh, activate that study case. Also, what I want to do is remove these uh, result plots, okay? I will remove those result plots over here and also this other result over here, okay? And then I would like to run some initial conditions. And what I am doing now is basically prepare the project in order to receive the um, the DPL that I will be using, okay? You must follow those steps very carefully before um, you import the DPL inside the project. Because if you don't set up properly uh, the study case, later you will get errors and then you will have some issues okay and i don't want my student making that mistake and that is the reason that is the reason that as i say you i want that you follow specifically my instruction okay uh initial conditions over here let me go to the result variables i will delete i will delete any other results okay coming from the bus bars or anything else okay i will delete them and for the synchronous machine also i will disappear all those variables and i will keep only two specific results okay and for those results i will go here and i will select fit rot and fit rel okay what I'm telling you, what I'm telling you is that I am cleaning the project. I clean all the result variables and I just keeping the result variable for this generator. Okay. And the two only variables that I am storing in memory for post-processing. I mean, this is the only two variables that I am capturing and I will use for my DPL. And those variables are calculations feed rot and feed rail okay okay done and now we have ready the result variables okay now regarding regarding the dpl um the first dpl that we will be using is a very specific dpl that is related to calculating the critical clearing time when we have this magic fault that is happening at the boost bar and disappearing few cycles later okay what i'm telling you is that the, this this dpl this critical clearing time is basically for academic purposes and what it's doing is basically inserting a short circuit in a boost bar and from there from there of course then few cycles later the the fault is instantaneously disappear and from there we assess if the system is stable or not for that reason, what I will do now is, again, initial conditions, and then go to the events, okay? And over here, you can see that there are two events. One event that is a short circuit, and you must be careful, this short circuit is at boost bar HV, okay? And this is a three-phase short circuit. It's extremely clear, very simple for my students. And the second event that we have here is that sudden clear of the fall, the short circuit, and that is happening at this time over here, okay? By default over there, you can see there is 0 0.55. It can be any number, you don't care, because the DPL will go there and it will be changing that time, okay? Okay, now let's close here, close here, and now we have the system ready to the final step, okay? What will be the final step? Well, if you go to my GitHub repository, if you go to my GitHub repository, 
you will find that there is a file, there is a file over there that is related with critical credit time, but you will see that that very specific a critical fault credit is related with boost bar, okay? I need that you download that from my GitHub repository and get ready in your computer. Because the next step is that we will import that very specific DPL for calculating the critical for clearing time at the boost bar, okay? That is a very specific DPL and it's only working if you have the very specific steps that I already defined, okay? But now, what is, the, what is the next step? The next step is I want to import this DPL inside my Power Factory project. And the reason that I am teaching you this is because my students, they will be using any other specific power system and then they must be able to replicate this procedure, okay? For that reason, what I will do now, what I will do now is something very basic, okay? What I will do is just taking a basic, a basic uh, trick over here, okay? I will deactivate, as you can see over here, I am deactivating the project, and on the name of that project, I will do here, import, okay? What I will do now is I will ask to Power Factory to import a very specific object, okay? Well, the process is extremely simple. Right now, right, bo uh, right button, okay? And I will say import, and I will go to the folder that I have with the two DPLs that I will be using in this video, okay? And in this case, the one that I want to import, the one that I need here inside this project, is basically the critical for clearing boss, okay? This is the critical clearing boss FDL, okay? And I will press open. And right now, Power Factoring is asking me, would you like to import this uh, specific project? And would you like to import this inside this very specific path? And I will say, yes, please do it. And right now, what you can see, what you can see is that inside this project, you can see that at the very end, a new, a new file, and you can see the icon saying DPL, a new icon appear over there, okay? And that very specific icon is representing the critical for clearing time for bosses, okay? However, the location of that DPL is not where I want to have my DPL, okay? Let me tell you the following. Years ago, Power Factory allowed you to put your DPL in some places. Right now, you can put your DPLs inside the library, the project library, but in this case, I will use my favorite approach. And my favorite approach is to move this uh, to move this uh, specific DPL inside the study case that I am doing, okay? For that reason, right button, and I will activate this very specific project. And right now we have active the project, and you must remember here, we have the uh, study case CCCT. What I will do now is go into the very end, I will identify here the location of the critical for clearing boss. And right now I will say right button and I will move inside the CCT, CCT um, folder, okay? Or study case. And I will do the following. I will say, okay. And right now you can see how the data manager move the DPL inside this very specific location over here, okay? Well, what I will do now, what I will do now is just check if this system is ready for using my DPL, okay? And to do so, what I will do is just basically run an initial conditions. Then I will run the simulation. You can see over here, this is a five second simulation and I will execute, okay? To see if everything is fine, 
what I will do is go to the output window and I will check here, okay? You can see that I activate the CCT, then we have here the load flow and you can see that the infinity bus is basically the slack bus. Then we have here the load flow results, control conditions, we have initial conditions successfully calculated. And then we have here the two events, one event at t equals zero seconds, and that is a short circuit in the terminal HV, and it's a full impedance of zero. And then we have the fault that is uh, clear at 550 milliseconds, okay? What I'm telling you is that I run this RMS Tracien simulation, and right now I am sure that this is properly working, okay? Now what I will do is clear again the output window, clear again the output window, and now is the moment of through. Because right now what I will do is just basically right button here on the top of the DPL, the critical clearing time for uh, mm, boost bars, and I will execute this, okay? And as you can see over here, it was quite fast, but if you look in the output window, there are several results over here, okay? The first thing that you must be, you, be, you can see over here, well, this DPL was created by me, August 2011. There are two events, one event that is the short circuit, then we have another event that is the clear short circuit, and we start the systematic calculation of the critical fall clearing time, okay? And this is the first calculation. You can see over here that the fault is clear at 10 milliseconds. Then we have another simulation, and right now uh, we have here um, clearing time at 1.072, and you can see how Power Factory is still moving around the time and clearing high and big, high and low, high and low the time, until the DPL is completely executed, okay? When the DPL is completely is executed, you will find here at the very end this very important line. And this line is telling you that the critical clearing time for that very specific fault at the bus bar HV, that is a 556.7 milliseconds, okay? That is, that is the critical uh, fault clearing time, okay? Now, what I want to do, what I want to do is to demonstrate to my students that this number, this number is pr completely right, okay? And that is the next step. Next step, I want to go back to the classical graphic window of Power Factory, and now I, will, I want to show you that this is the proper result that we are looking for. Okay, right now, what I will do is something very simple, okay? I will go here and I will stop over the static case that we have before and I will right button on the top of that and I will say activate, okay? And right now, in front of us, we have here the static, uh, static case that we have been using before. The static case that we used to I show you uh, the um, time domain simulation, the RMS time domain simulation, okay? And right now, what I will do, what I will do is demonstrate you that mm, this critical clearing time that we calculate before, uh, 556.7 milliseconds, is properly calculated, okay? And what is the best way to demonstrate my student this? Okay, the best or the optimal way to show you is running a time domain simulation with a time that is lower than 556.7 milliseconds, and if the, if the fault is removed at time before 556.7 milliseconds, the system must be stable, remain stable for uh, rotor angle stability. 
but if the fault is clear after 556.7 milliseconds, you must, you must recognize that the system is rotor angle unstable, okay? And that means that the synchronous machine must lose the synchronism. And that is what I will do, okay? What I will do now is I will press here, initial conditions, and I will say execute, okay? Right now we have initial conditions and I will check the disturbances, okay? We have here a short circuit event at t equals zero. And what I will do, what I will do is I will use 556 milliseconds, okay? What I'm telling you is that the fault is inserted, the three-phase short circuit is inserted at t equals zero, and we are removing this fault from the boost bar HV at 556 milliseconds, okay? Now let's close here and let's run the simulation, okay? And what I will do is we have here two graphic results one of them is plot results i will go there and from here from here it's quite evident that the system remain stable okay as you can see over here on the top you can see the rotor speed is starting from one per unit and it's reaching as you can see over there it's reaching uh basically let's see it's reaching uh, 1.019 per unit at 0 0.556, okay? But the interesting point for us is that you can see that the initial rotor angle, we calculate that angle before, that is the initial rotor angle, delta zero, and that is 13.21 degrees, okay? But during the disturbance because we have this short circuit and there is not active power that um, reduce the acceleration of this synchronous machine during the fault the machine is accelerated quite fast and the rotor angle start to open and that is the reason that you can see that starting from 13.21 is reaching a maximum of 161 Point eighty two at one second okay but the good news is after the disturbance is removed from the system after the fault is clear at 556 milliseconds where you can see that the rotor angle start to oscillate but you can see how the oscillations are decreasing on the size as a consequence, this is this system stay stable. But now is the proper and very interesting situation. Because what I will do now is I will use a, a clearing time that is larger, that is bigger than 556.7 seconds. And in that case, the system must be unstable. And to be honest, what I will do here is just run initial conditions, simple. Then I will go here to edit the simulation events. And I will go here to the, uh, to the object clear short circuit. And I will open this event. And instead of using 556 milliseconds, I will use 557 milliseconds okay i just increase one millisecond the time for clearing the fault okay and right now i will run initial conditions and then i will run the simulation wow this is amazing this is amazing because it's extremely clear here the situation okay as you can see on the top we have the rotor speed okay in this rotor speed what we can see is in zero we have the three uh, the three phase short circuit and there is no way to dissipate the 
active power. There is no active power coming from this generator. There is no possibility of sending active power to the um, to the infinity bus. And there is a reason that you can see how the rotor speed take off. But at 557 milliseconds, we clear the fault. And you can see over here, you can see over here that initially the rotor speed tried to recover and going down near to one per unit. But from there, you can see that again is starting to increase and that is a very bad moment. Okay. Why? Let me tell you. As you can see over here, down at the rotor angle, we start from this number over here, and that is the initial rotor angle, that is delta, delta zero, and that is 13.21 degree. And during the fold, because the rotor is accelerating, the rotor angle, the power angle, is opening and increasing. And that is no a problem. The problem is that when we reach here, 1.3386, you can see how the angle is reaching 178 degree, 180 degree, and we are totally bad because this machine is losing the synchronism. And you can see how the angle is still increasing, and you can see here how the rotor speed is increasing. To be honest, in terms of this uh, specific behavior, you can see that there are some oscillations, but those oscillations, they are slightly dampened. But the problem is that we have here a non-oscillatory, unstable condition. Because even those small oscillations, they are dissipating, we have here a component that is making the rotor angle and also the rotational speed to increase very, very fast. And this is the case where I can tell you this is a fully unstable rotor angle, unstable system, okay? What I'm telling you is that if the fall here is, is, is not clear before 556.7 milliseconds, if the fault is not clear below that time, well, this system will be unstable, rotor angle unstable, okay? Well, we reached the end of this video because in this video I show you um, a very specific uh, DPL that is used for critical fault clearing time calculation. Remember, DPL is the short for Dixieland Simulation Language, and that is basically a script that is inside an object that allows you that allows you to execute to execute automatic calculations inside Power Factory. Of course, in order to create those DPLs, you have to you must have a proper understanding about how Power Factory is working inside and also understanding about this magic language, the excellent simulation language, okay? But that is beyond the scope of this video and also beyond the scope of this course, okay? I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you are able to use this, this DPL. Again, this video is not teaching you the DPL. It's not my target in this video and the scope of this video telling you how to use, uh, how to program DPL. The job here is just basically show you how to import the DPL inside your project, how to run the DPL and how to get the result, okay? That is basically my interest here in this video. Well, it's almost time to say bye, but before that, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you enjoy, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and stay in touch. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you uh, I will see you in the next one where I will be talking about another DPL for critical for clearing time, okay? Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye now.